Story 7, Unexpected Ripples She woke up with a gasp. Sweat coated her body, causing her to shiver. Her fingers tingled. Her hair swung down in front of her eyes, tickling her nose. It had been so long since Fare had touched her friend. Pana had been there, really been there, right next to her. They had even laid their head on her shoulder. Everything had seemed okay, despite nothing being okay. For precious seconds, she had forgotten that she was here to bring Pana back home, or, if that was impossible, to kill them. One wasn't supposed to cuddle with their enemy, no matter how one felt about them. She glanced over at Kai, but the short-haired woman was sound asleep next to her. Good, she hadn't wanted to disturb her. There was no way she could keep up a conversation with another person then and there. Silently, she got out of bed, put on her clothes, and walked out of the room they were staying in. She wandered down the hall and out onto the deck. Everywhere, people were beginning to wake up again. It seemed they had all suddenly fallen unconscious right about when Vare had. Odd. No one seemed to be paying her much attention as she wandered out onto the deck. She breathed in the fresh air, letting it flow through her and clear her head. She glanced around the deck. The dragon was lying next to Pana, its tail curled around their body. They may have been tall, but they still looked so fragile tucked up like that, just as they had curled up against her. Pana began to stand up. Once on their feet, they immediately hugged the giant reptile. Vare smiled. Then she cursed. Then she walked back inside. Let me get this straight. There are things out there that can destroy the world, literally, physically destroy the world, and you were told where they are and how to stop them in one of those weird visions we all just had? Reconstructed from pure memory, the map of all the weapons' locations sat on a table between them in the captain's room. Though the points may not have lined up exactly with the ones from the vision, Pana knew that they were as close as they needed to be. They could be found. Yes. Bob didn't seem at ease with the answer, nor did anyone else for that matter. Wave Skimmer murmured from the doorway. He couldn't quite fit in the room, and Tally rubbed the back of her neck. There was a pause. It must be a lot for them all to take in. Pana had woken up from the visions exhausted and reeling from what they had seen. They weren't even sure they could be relied on to complete the task. Salston had given Pana and Wave Skimmer the stone in the hopes that they would be able to bring the world together, and now they knew that part of that task included finding and destroying these mysterious weapons. But what if they couldn't do it? Pana had run from home, had run from Naka, Sab, and Ezra, had encouraged the people of Riotho to run from their home of generations, had run from Vare and Kai at the waterfall, and had left the port so that they could e put even more distance between themselves and their pursuers. They wished that they could say the places they left were better because of their short presence in them, but there was no way of knowing if that was true, because, at the end of the day, they did leave. The boat rocked under them. Pana felt themselves lean to the right and then the left. After days spent on the boat, they were still never sure which direction the boat would toss them. Like asked, And these weapons were placed throughout the world by some group... What did you call it? The us? She was not nodding her head. She stared at Pana, her eyes soft but distant. Pana wanted to reach out and hold her hand and forget about this whole thing, but they couldn't. The U.S. Yes. Right. And you know how to destroy them? Pana rubbed the stone in the palm of their right hand. With the slightest bit of hesitation, they extended their arm and placed the stone on the table. In the light of the candles surrounding the room, the blue glow of the stone seemed diminished. The stone itself had reshaped itself into a long, thin beam that was thickest at either end. It rolled along the table when Pana let go of it. I might, I, I can't be sure. Tally looked at the stone. That's the stone you used to save us all from the wave back at the port, right? Can you use it to destroy the weapons? Yeah, I... Salston had given them, and Wave Skimmer, the stone. She had told them that they could help bring the world together. 
not because they were destined to be great leaders or were descended from some legendary lineage, but because they had proven that they could care for one another. But could they save the world? The world was big. It had always seemed so small back home. Ice surrounded them then, keeping them from venturing too far. The world wasn't even a concept at that point. And then, with Wave Skimmer, Pana had gone where they believed no one had gone before, only to find out a world with people and places that they couldn't have imagined did actually exist. They turned to Wave Skimmer now. His head filled the doorway. He noticed Pana looking at him and cocked his head to one side. Then he noticed their clenched fists and their gaze directed at the floor. He nodded once and then hiccuped, spraying sparks across the room. While Bob, like Tally, and MC tried to protect the map and other documents from catching fire, Pana slipped outside. No one came looking for them. If they had, it wouldn't have been hard to find them. Dragons couldn't really be anything but conspicuous on a ship made for humans, even one as big as this one was. It was a mark of how much they respected Pana's need to be alone, even after Wave Skimmer had created such a fiery distraction. They sat at the bow. Wave Skimmer dipped his head over the railing, and Pana stood next to him. A swarm of bugs with bright orange wings about a foot in length and two claws fluttered in front of them over the open waves. They seemed to be attracted to the eerie, gelatinous creature slowly tiptoeing over the water. Tiptoeing may have been the wrong word. Most of the creature was in a rounded, viscous center that was just barely transparent. Tentacles poked out from what seemed to be the back of the creature and touched the very top of the water, moving in large horizontal arcs and pushing the creature forward. Pana sketched the creature and a bug in their notebook and wrote a few observations. The creature appeared to be moving in whichever direction the wind blew it, while having only a limited capacity to shuffle at a slight angle to the wind. While they had thought the bugs were eating the creature, they realized that they were just resting on it. There were a few places to rest out on the water, so this giant moving goop was probably the most solid perch they would be able to find. In their notebook, Pana labeled the creature Anemus Pothi. It was still very warm for Pana, but the wind drove the rest of the passengers into the cabin. Pana took off their jacket and sat on the railing, letting their feet dangle above the water. They leaned back, resting on Wave Skimmer's side. What do you think we should do? Pana asked their friend. He didn't move so as to not risk accidentally pushing Pana off the boat. He just garbled into the wind. We've done a lot since we left. I'm truly impressed, especially with you, they patted Wave Skimmer. But we were forced into all those situations. I didn't want to leave home. Yeah, I was upset and things were moving so fast. Who wants to grow up and have more responsibility? But I didn't want to leave. They were all going to kill me if I stayed. They followed us to Naka, and then the Guardian of Ryotho trapped us there. Vare took the stone, and we had to retrieve it from her. And then that wave was going to kill everyone unless we did something. Pana breathed. They allowed themselves to slow down. I'm just worried that we aren't good enough to disable these weapons. I mean, I didn't even know they existed until today. Things just escalated a lot. We're dealing with our own issues from the past. We shouldn't have to deal with the world's past as well. Wave Skimmer clacked his teeth and tapped his claws on the ground. But that's just it, Pana replied. We don't have to find these places. We can just keep traveling if we wanted to. We could keep discovering new creatures and study them. You heard, Salston. Someone else can do this job. Someone more qualified and powerful than we are. Wave Skimmer thumped his tail on the deck and hissed. Pana felt a little ashamed. You're right, we've done some impressive things. We're not so weak. And we have the stone, so maybe... They gazed into the stone. The long cylindrical shape was replaced by a flat and reflective surface. Pana could see themselves in the stone, their brown eyes almost blending into the surrounding blue. Looking at their reflection, they saw that they were scared. Their eyes looked tired, and their nose twitched and felt a tad stuffy, even though they weren't sick. 
Their father always said they had their grandfather's eyes. Sometimes traits just skipped a generation. Father would have walked to the nearest location that Pana had marked on the map without a second thought. So would their grandparents. Well, possibly not their grandmother, who would have questioned if the situation was really as bad as it appeared to be. It wasn't that Pana didn't believe these weapons needed to be destroyed. They certainly did. The fact that anything so destructive still existed and could potentially be used was insane. They didn't want Naka, Sab, Ezra, Tur, their father, or anyone else living in a world that could be destroyed at any moment. So what was holding Pana back? The Anemis Pothi began to fall behind the boat. It looked peaceful as it loped along, even though it didn't have much of a choice where it went either. Perhaps it didn't mind going wherever it was directed. Pana thought of their father again and smiled. They missed him. Can I join you? asked a voice behind them. It was Like. Pana nodded, and Like sat on the railing next to them. Their shoulders didn't touch, but Pana was hyper aware of their proximity. Right now, the only person they wanted to be touching was Wave Skimmer, so they were grateful that the captain decided not to sit any closer. Like pointed to the creature that Pana had dubbed the Anemis Pothi. We call those blobs, she said. They look very gooey, like a blob. Are they gooey? Pana asked. I don't know. We had a sailor who wanted to find out. Good kid. We pulled the ship alongside and he poked it. The next moment he was inside the middle of the blob. He was eaten. Oh. Pana was no longer interested in finding out what the Anemis Pothi was made of. Some mysteries could be left alone. The two of them sat in silence for a little while longer. The sun was not quite setting, but it was slowly lowering behind them. Light rays were refracted by the Anemis Pothi and shot out of its front end like a thousand tiny rainbow beams. When the silence had dragged on for too long, Pana broke it and asked Like why they had come to see them. Like considered the question for a while longer. Well, she said, you ran out of the meeting room after telling us all that these crazy things could destroy the world existed and were all over the place. It's a lot to take in, and it's more than understandable if you would prefer to leave it to someone else. Just because you were the one who learned about it doesn't mean you have a responsibility to do something about it. It was a good point albeit one that Pana had already considered. They remained silent. Like kept glancing at them, waiting for them to respond. When it was clear that the conversation had died, Like tried to start it again. Bob, Tally, MC, and I support whatever you decide. We want to at least go to the nearest location and see what we can do. But we can drop you off somewhere else first. You could wait there for your arm to heal. Pana wanted to answer. They wanted to reach out to Like and hold her hand. Maybe in another life they could have pursued something with the captain or been more confident. But if they were to reach out, who was to say that they wouldn't mess up somehow? That every good thing that they had done wouldn't have been for nothing as the world crumbled around them, all because of one accident. They weren't sure if they were still thinking about Like as that last thought passed through their mind. Like sighed and hung her head forward. I'll leave you alone, she said, and turned and got off the railing. Pana listened to her footsteps fade away behind them. I'm afraid of making a mistake, Pana whispered to no one. A flare of red light shot across the sky. It grew larger and larger. Pana squinted their eyes, wondering what it was. As it moved, stars began to fade, consumed by the brightness of the red streak. Wave skimmer shot up, his scales flashing crimson in alarm, head swiveling. Fire slammed into the water next to the boat, shoving it to the side on a massive boiling wave. Condensed water vapor rose up alongside the boat, blocking all vision to that side. With help from wave skimmer, Pana jumped up back onto the deck of the boat. They raised their good arm above their eyes, trying to see where the fire had come from, and squinting into the distance. When they heard the roar, their heart stopped. Racing towards them was a dragon. 
What's going on? Bob called as he, Tally, MC, and Lyke ran towards the bow of the boat. Dragon, said Panna, pointing at the winged lizard hurtling towards them. There wasn't much time to lose. They turned and looked at everyone in the group, one by one, giving them orders as they did. Tally and Bob, go and make sure all the non-sailors remain calm. It's best if they don't get in the way of the sailors. Like, get your sailors ready to row. MC, you'll have to chart a new course and get everyone away from here. I'm planning on heading north, so maybe you can go south. Just a moment there, Pana, said Bob, holding out his hand. Where do you think you're running off to? Pana gaped. Running, they said. I'm not running. I'm trying to save you. That dragon is going to see Wave Skimmer and myself and chase us away from here. It just wants me. Why would it want you? asked Tally. Before Pana could think of a reply, Like interjected. We can discuss that later. Now we need to figure out what to do. This is my boat. I give the orders. Pana, you stay here. We're not letting you fight this alone. A second blast of fire smashed into the water on the opposite side of the boat, rocking it even more violently. The dragon was almost on them. Things would have been so much simpler if they had just let Pana leave. The dragon would have chased them, and probably killed them, but at least everyone on the boat would be safe. Staying here put everyone at risk. This dragon was here because Pana had stumbled into the, that cave. They just knew it. Just as Vare had followed them all the way from the village, this dragon most certainly had as well. They never had any intention of hurting their fellow humans, but sometimes you couldn't control what effects your actions had on the world around you. One decision could ripple outward in unexpected and unwanted ways. That didn't make Pana feel any less guilty. Fine, they snarled. I'll stay. Just be careful, please. The group nodded. Like said, you will need to fly, though. Distract that dragon until we can think of a plan. Don't go too far. Wave Skimmer snorted in assent, blowing a light film of smoke over everyone. He lowered himself to the deck and allowed Pana to get on. They grabbed the saddle with their one good hand, hoping that they wouldn't need their left arm for anything. It was still tightly bound to their torso. It would be a miracle to survive this and not injure their arm any further. With one last look at their friends, Pana and Wave Skimmer took to the sky. It had been far too long since their last flight together. As the wind rushed by, Pana, waving their hair around behind them and causing their jacket to billow out behind them, Pana smiled. They took a moment to pat Wave Skimmer on the side, and he rumbled in appreciation. He had missed flying with them as well. There was little time to relish the feeling, however, as the other dragon was now upon them. Pana could see its green eyes starkly contrasting its red scales. Wave Skimmer had reverted back to his usual blue, though his face showed some signs of green. Neither he nor Pana knew how to fight. Wave Skimmer was smaller than most dragons, and any roughhousing experience he had was more in the form of bullying than he had endured as a hatchling. For their part, Pana had always left any fight to Vare. She had always been happy to defend the two of them from their own human bullies, or anything else that might have wanted to eat them out on the ice. If the two of them were to face the dragon head-on, they would lose in a heartbeat. They would have to find a, a way of distracting it long enough for their friends on the boat to come up with a way to defeat it. Wave Skimmer whimpered, and Pana did their best to convey strength and assurance as they pat him, but they couldn't help but feel weak themselves. The other dragon roared, fire flying out of its mouth like saliva. With a sudden burst of speed, Wave Skimmer ducked beneath the dragon's outstretched claws and flew under it. Pana watched the dragon hit the water, sending waves crashing outwards and slamming into the boat. For a moment they thought they had defeated the dragon before they remembered that dragons were excellent swimmers. A shadow grew larger as it approached the surface of the water and out shot the dragon. Wave Skimmer had risen further into the air while it had been underwater, but now it was catching up to them. It shot a fireball at them, which Wave Skimmer managed to bat away with his tail. It hadn't been easy or painless. His tail was singed and some of the scales had broken away. While resistant to a great many things, dragon scales could be broken by their own species' fire. Another fireball flew towards them, but this time Wave Skimmer managed to dodge it. 
He twirled in the air, just barely managing to get to safety in time. Pana lost their grip on the saddle and began sliding down Wave Skimmer's back. They grabbed with their right hand, and for a moment they thought they would be able to grab one of the straps of the saddle, but they missed it and began to fall. They closed their eyes. There was a sudden jerk. Pana didn't think they had hit the water. They could still breathe. Counting to three, they opened their eyes and realized that the other dragon had caught them. It opened its maw, and Pana could see the fire start to build in its throat. Air rushed by Pana's face as the dragon breathed in. There was a sudden whoosh as Wave Skimmer rammed into the dragon's side, knocking it off balance and breaking its grip on Pana. They began to fall again, heading with the dazed dragon towards the water. Momentarily disoriented, it took Wave Skimmer a few seconds to reach Pana. He grabbed them, and with a tremendous downbeat of his wings, prevented them both from tumbling into the water as well. Thanks, friend. Do you... you think it's over? asked Pana, looking below for any sign of the dragon. Something slammed into them from above. The dragon had looped around in the air and come out on top of them, and was now hurtling towards the water while holding Wave Skimmer. Pana lashed out at the dragon's claws, trying to shake its grip on them. They wouldn't be able to distract the dragon for much longer. Where were the others? The boat trembled as fire rained down upon it, and as the dragon crashed into the water and beat at the air with its wings, teams of crew members ran around the deck, putting out small fires that had sprung up, dodging between other sailors, pulling on ropes, and trying to keep the sail from being blasted off the mast. Vare and Kai ran through the cabin and out onto the deck. Having never been on a boat before, they both struggled to keep their footing. Ice was one thing, but a wooden death trap bobbing in the water was something entirely different. When they spotted Bob, Tally, and MC along with the captain looking out over the side of the boat, they rushed forwards. What's going on? asked Kai while Vare steadied herself by slamming both her injured and non-injured hand on the railing without so much as a grimace. The captain pointed upwards, concern plastered over her face. Dragon. And there it was, a dragon. Not the dragon that Pana had run away with, but a new red dragon. There was no time to process her feelings. Vare had seen dragons before, but she had survived through sheer luck. If the dragons had noticed her standing in the entrance to the cave on their way out, they surely would have carried her off just as they had carried and dropped the other four villagers who were, went with her. But somehow they had missed her, and she was able to survive. Now that she was facing another dragon, she didn't quite know what to do. But she could improvise. She could see Pana riding on their own beast. Kai voiced what Vare was thinking. Should we let the dragon kill them? No, she replied without hesitation. Right now they are less of a threat, and if we do let them die, the dragon will just come for all of us. Is there any sort of weapon on board that we can use? She asked the group at large. Everyone shrugged. Generally, I don't get into scrapes, I just transport people and things, the captain said. Bob shook his head. Given the time, I could construct a big net, but we really don't want to attract the dragon to the boat. If we strung up a net and it flew into it, the boat would capsize. What about attracting something else here? asked MC. If we dump enough moldy fish into the water, perhaps we'll have some visitors? Now it was Tally who shook her head. But jumpers are scared of dragons. You saw how they swam away when they spotted Wave Skimmer. Wave Skimmer? Pana's beast had a name? Vare couldn't say that she was surprised. She should have guessed that Pana couldn't help but give a name to the monster following them around everywhere. And then she had a thought. If we attracted the jumpers here, would they attract something else? Something that might be able to take out the dragon? And C tapped her fingers to her forehead, leaving the faintest of red marks there. Why else would I suggest bringing that murderous fish that can kill us from above for? Sometimes I wonder how anyone else manages to survive in this world. Somehow, they had managed to survive for more than a few minutes. The dragon kept shooting fire and clawing at them, but Wave Skimmer managed to evade most of its attacks. How much longer he could keep it up was anyone's guess. 
His mouth hung open and his tongue flicked into the air as he attempted to cool himself. His scales had faded and were now gray with a tinge of blue. Keep it up a bit longer, encouraged Pana, rubbing their friend's neck. The others will think of something soon. If they didn't, well, that wouldn't be good for the passengers. Pana couldn't tell if anything was being planned. They were too far away to really notice what was going on back on the boat, and whenever they did get close enough, they would have to quickly dart away to draw the dragon's fire. They briefly entertained the idea of finding a school of jumpers and provoking them, but then remembered that jumpers were frightened of dragons. There would be no help in this fight. That was why Pana was slightly taken aback when they noticed three sets of three dorsal fins sliding through the surface of the water. Below them, jumpers feasted on piles of moldy fish that were being dumped off the sides of the boat. The school must have been at least fifty strong. They must not have noticed the dragons yet, or the jumpers would have fled. That, or they really wanted those fish. Though Pana didn't think it would work, they directed Wave Skimmer down towards the jumpers. The jumpers didn't swim away immediately. Perhaps they were too busy eating to notice the two dragons flying right above them. Even when Wave Skimmer singed the surface of the water with a thin jet of flame, there was no reaction from the jumpers, frightened or otherwise. Perhaps they had gotten over their fear of dragons and found the species disinteresting. There was really no way to be sure. Whatever the case, the water rippled as all of the jumpers ate. Come on, Pana yelled towards the water. Please help us. Do something. The water churned as every last jumper leaped in the air. Pana sighed in relief before realizing they were all fleeing the scene. The back of their neck tingled as they imagined the dragon bearing down on them, growing closer with every second that passed. They leaned forward and clung to Wave Skimmer. An icy blast of water and air rose from the sea and pushed Wave Skimmer and Pana forward, pelting them with shards of ice. There wasn't any time to wonder what had shot the ice at them before one piece caught Pana on their right arm leaving a long, jagged cut from which blood flew all around them. Wave Skimmer tumbled through the air, spreading out his wings in an attempt to catch himself. His feet hit the water, but he was upright, and with a few wing beats he managed to fly back into the air. The other dragon was not so lucky. A chunk of ice had formed on its wing and dragged it down into the water. It crashed, but for the moment it managed to remain at the surface. The splashes around the thrashing dragon were tremendous. Its head bobbed up and down, going underwater for longer and longer periods of time. Pana looked at the dragon one last time. Only one eye poked out above the water, and then it was gone. Wave Skimmer groaned in between pants. I know, replied Pana. They looked at the boat, and then back at where the dragon had been. If not for Pana waking up the dragons in the first place, it never would have flown all this way and put the lives of all the boat passengers at risk. Bob, Tally, M.C., and Like had all been put in danger because of them. For the moment, they were all safe, but if Pana went through with what they were thinking now, that all could change. Ugh, you're right. Let's go. An exhausted wave skimmer took one last moment to steady himself before plunging into the water. The water was cooler than Pana was expecting, and for the first time since leaving the village, they almost felt cold. They tried opening their eyes to see where they were going, but the water stung. It wasn't like the waterfall where they could see some of what was underwater. Luckily, they didn't have to see. Wave Skimmer swam deeper and deeper, using his tail and wings to push the water behind him. He would know where to go, and Pana would just have to hold on to him for as long as they could. Suddenly, they stopped. Pana felt themselves continuing to move forward, but used their legs to keep them in place, looping their feet through some of the straps in the saddle. They couldn't hear anything, but they felt Wave Skimmer lunge forward, moving slowly in the water. There was some resistance, but then his claws continued on their arc. Weighed down by something, they began moving again. Pana couldn't hold their breath for much longer. Their lungs felt like they were being pushed together, and their head was throbbing. They weren't going to make it. For only a moment, their mouth opened, and an air bubble escaped. Pana forced their mouth to remain closed. The water fell away, 
Impana could breathe again. They opened their eyes, gasping. They fell forward onto Wave Skimmer, too exhausted to move. Wave Skimmer also remained motionless, aside from taking deep, gasping breaths. Next to them floated the other dragon, just as exhausted as the two of them were. It looked at Pana, and for a moment they thought it might just have enough energy to kill them both, here and now. But the anger had left its big green eye. It wheezed, spitting water out of its mouth. Pana shook as they reached out. They couldn't tell if their arm was moving or not. They watched as blood spread out from it into the water. With a sudden shudder, they felt their right hand land on the dragon's snout. It's okay, they whispered. It's okay. A net fell around them, dragging them up and away from the dragons. They knew that the dragons would be lifted up on the boat next. Six pairs of hands pulled them from the net. Someone with a soft fur coat carried them away from the edge of the boat and laid them down. Hana whispered a faint, thank you, and then fell unconscious. When Pana woke, they were warm. They were completely dry and lay in a bed in the cabin of the boat. Their right arm was bandaged. It could still be moved. It wasn't broken after all, but the bandage still felt a bit tight. Clean clothes lay by their feet. Pana stood up and expected them. The clothes were more colorful than they were used to back in the village, and they suspected they were items that Lyke had picked up throughout her time traveling around the bay. There were a few options to choose from. Pana decided on some green pants with a black skirt and a silvery blue button-down shirt. They looked at their reflection in a mirror by the wall and decided to tuck in the shirt. Brushing their hair to one side, they decided they looked good enough and left the room. The deck was sparsely populated, and it was easy enough to see why. The red dragon they had fought stood on the wooden planks, looking around at everyone as they went about the business of operating a ship. Whenever anyone walked close by, it jumped a little, causing the boat to lean violently to one side. It also growled. Wave Skimmer stood nearby, trying his best to keep the dragon calm. He wasn't particularly adept at it. When he noticed Pana walking towards them, he sighed in relief. Like Bob, Tally, and MC stood at a healthy distance from the dragons. No one has been able to get close to it. It doesn't seem to be comfortable around us, said Tally. I'm not comfortable around it, said MC. Everyone looked at her. She threw her arms towards the sky. What? Oh, don't tell me you're comfortable after it tried killing us all. Pana nearly died. Am I the only one who saw that? Bob sighed. He turned to Pana. We saw you dive in for it and decided to bring it aboard. As you can see, we aren't sure that was such a smart move yet. Aside from Wave Skimmer, none of us have met any other dragons. We just grew up with stories. Wave Skimmer is a delight, but this other fellow did just try to blast us all. It was a fair statement. Pana didn't yet know whether they had made the right decision either. There was still the possibility that, by saving the dragon, they had doomed the ship. It was really up to the dragon now to decide what it wanted. I trust you, Like said. She nodded nervously, and her hand twitched. Pana took it as a sign to continue on toward the dragon. With Wave Skimmer, they could largely tell what he was thinking. With any luck, they could also interpret this new dragon's body language and roars. They would have to try. It pawed the ground as Pana came closer, gouging deep troughs into the wood. But it seemed to be an action based on nervousness rather than aggression. Regardless, Pana decided to stand next to Wave Skimmer, just in case. He always made them feel more comfortable. Hey there, they said, keeping some space between them and the dragon. How... how are you? The dragon stopped clawing at the ground and tilted its head to one side. Wave Skimmer groaned. Pana gulped. Their mouth felt dry. Sweat began to bead on their forehead. They would have to be cautious. They sat down, folding their legs on top of each other, and placed their good arm on their thigh. "'You came from the north, didn't you?' they asked. "'You lived in the ice with my friend, Wave Skimmer.' The dragon snorted in what could have been confirmation. Pana nodded. "'I was the one who walked into your cave. Maybe you all were awake before then, but something happened when I entered. 
I didn't mean to disturb you, and I had no intention of hurting any of you. Dragons were stories. When I was a kid, I was told tales of these magnificent, fiery beings riding across the sky and lighting up the world. But I was also told that dragons were fierce and that they could were mightier than any predator. I didn't believe these stories. Pana laughed, and they reached out to touch Wave Skimmer, who nuzzled them with his snout. The other dragon looked as if it would have raised an eyebrow if it could. Its muscles had certainly relaxed a bit. They gestured to both the red dragon and wave skimmer. But here you are. You're both real. One of you is my friend, and the other, well... They gazed into the dragon's green eyes, trying to show it how much they meant the words they were saying. If it didn't understand the language, hopefully it would understand this. We don't have to be enemies, either. The choice is up to you. Yes, Wave Skimmer and I saved you from that ice thing, which... They glanced back at their group of human friends. I do want details about later. But you... You owe us nothing. You could kill us all. When I walked into your cave and some of the dragons killed my friends and neighbors... I know that bad things can happen when you least expect them to or even when you're trying to do something good for someone else. But that doesn't mean it isn't worth trying to do good things anyway. Regardless of what happens next, I don't think anyone can ever say that saving another's life isn't a good thing. We can't be scared to help others because we think there may be unexpected negatives or that we may mess up and end up hurting them. At least, I don't want to be scared. I wasn't sure that I was going to save you, but I'm glad that I did. The dragon sat down on its back two legs, keeping its front upright. Pana waited, unsure of what the dragon was going to do. Without any notice, it leaped forward. Pana closed their eyes. When they realized that they were still alive, they opened their eyes. The dragon was flying back north. Like Bob, Tally, and MC all stared at Pana, amazed that through this whole ordeal, no one had been hurt. Pana stood up and walked over to them. They steadied themselves, breathing in deeply, and then letting the air flow back out of them. The right path forward was clear. Whether or not Pana would succeed or end up hurting even more people, they did not know. But they knew that they had enough information to succeed, and that they had to try their best to do what they could to help. If you all are ready, let's go find that first weapon.